Remember when being a gig worker meant you were living the dream? Flexible hours, unlimited potential, the glory days of choosing your own schedule, making great money, and being your own boss? Well, those days are dead. In its stead, you'll find the algorithms that concealed cut wages, the rating systems that turned happy customers into weapons, the middlemen tech giants that took big cuts while shouldering zero risks. You'll hear the stories of workers trapped between five-star service and one-star working conditions, drivers squeezed by insurance costs and vehicle wear, couriers racing against artificially intelligent clocks just to make an extra buck, now before you crucify me in the comments section, hear me out. The gig economy was supposed to revolutionize work, but somewhere along the way, the promise went wrong. This is the chilling autopsy of how the gig economy became just another cog in the old machine. Here's what really killed the gig economy's buzz. There are forces that allowed gig platforms to explode seemingly out of nowhere. The 2008 financial crisis was a catalyst that made the gig economy's sudden rise possible. Millions found themselves unemployed as the recession ravaged jobs and entire industries. Even for those who kept traditional jobs, the recession fostered discontent. Wage growth stagnated and opportunities for advancement dwindled. Office life came to be associated with corporate bureaucracy and drudgery. Recent graduates, saddled with debt, faced bleak prospects in the post-recession labor market. At the same time, smartphones and app stores were just becoming widespread. The gig economy exploded in popularity in the early 2010s with the success of Uber and Airbnb. Platforms like Uber realized mobile technology could enable connections between freelance workers and customers needing a service on demand. GPS made coordinating rides efficient. Payment could happen seamlessly via an app. This allowed almost anyone to monetize their time, skills, or assets in a scalable way. Millions of idled workers leaped at the chance to earn extra income on flexible schedules as free agent contractors. By classifying workers as contractors rather than employees, they tapped into massive supply while avoiding costly benefits. The recession had shaken confidence in lifetime corporate jobs with benefits and pensions. The gig economy offered a radical new vision. Be your own boss, set your own hours, ditch the office. Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, Upwork, and other platforms drew in huge supply and demand thanks to this perfect storm. The rapid adoption surprised even the startups themselves. Uber alone went from zero to over one million drivers in just a few years. Other companies emerged offering similar services. At its peak, over a third of Americans participated in the gig economy, be it driving, delivering, renting, or freelancing. Venture capital poured in, valuing companies like Uber and Lyft at tens of billions of dollars. Their meteoric growth and promise of disrupting entire industries with on-demand labor captured the public imagination. For a generation scarred by economic collapse and stagnation, the gig economy represented a new path forward. The chance to control one's destiny as a micro-entrepreneur had great appeal after the corporate ladder was upended. This brewing disillusionment with traditional employment, combined with enabling technology, set the stage for the gig economy's meteoric rise. When the status quo fails, radical ideas can take hold rapidly. This new digitally powered model shook stagnant sectors like the taxi and hospitality industry. For a while, the future seemed bright as workers and customers believed that within a decade, all work would be gigified. Despite initial euphoria, the gig economy soon faced a wave of criticism and controversy over its practices. One major issue was plummeting pay. As more and more workers flooded platforms, average earnings dropped sharply. Uber alone unilaterally cut driver pay rates five times between 2016 and 2020. Workers had little leverage to resist these cuts to their already unstable incomes. Income also became unpredictable as opaque algorithms controlled assignments and pay. Ghost kitchens and questionable tip policies sparked outrage. Another problem was the lack of basic protections and benefits. With no employer status, gig workers had zero access to unemployment insurance, workers' compensation, health benefits, or paid leave. 
the flexibility came at the total cost of job security. Unsafe conditions arose due to a lack of regulations and accountability, resulting in assaults, robberies, and accidents among rideshare drivers, delivery workers, and home-sharing hosts. Classifying workers as contractors rather than employees allowed companies to avoid costs like minimum wage, overtime pay, and anti-discrimination protections. Many argued that this misclassification was illegal. Unethical business practices such as tip skimming, leaking user data, and surge pricing during emergencies further eroded public trust. While Silicon Valley raked in billions, the workers actually providing the services faced falling incomes, instability, and lack of rights. With no power to unionize or negotiate, they absorbed all the risk. Gig companies made grand claims about empowering workers and modernizing outdated systems, but many argued the model simply exploited people by skirting labor regulations in the name of disruption. Rather than free agents liberated by technology, some saw gig workers as vulnerable people struggling without a safety net. The backlash mounted as promises collided with reality. Has falling pay or lack of security put you off gig platforms? Let us know in the comments below as we explore how the pandemic made things even worse for many gig workers. The pandemic proved to be the final straw, obliterating the demand for services overnight and leaving millions of gig workers without any income. It brought to the fore how precarious gig work could be. During the peak of quarantines, Uber rides plummeted by up to 80% in some markets. Airbnb witnessed a decline of 72% in bookings compared to the previous year. The revenues of Uber and Lyft nosedived by over 50% within weeks. Whole Foods ended its Amazon Flex contracts, leaving millions without any means of livelihood at the most vulnerable time. According to a study conducted by UC Berkeley, over 75% of gig workers had to resort to unemployment benefits or find work outside of platforms during the pandemic. The lifestyle marketed by these companies quickly disintegrated for many as the crisis dragged on. Flexibility is often touted as a major benefit of gig work. However, when the COVID-19 crisis hit, the absence of basic protections such as sick leave and unemployment insurance left gig workers vulnerable and exposed. As the pandemic disrupted gig work and unemployment benefits began to run out, many gig workers were forced to reconsider their reliance on gig platforms. Some of them chose to pursue more traditional jobs due to burnout and exposure to health risks. While gig platforms proved to be resilient overall, the pandemic significantly damaged the public perception of these platforms. The once-seen image of easy and dependable earnings was shattered for both workers and customers. Companies that rely on gig workers classify them as independent contractors to avoid regulations such as minimum wage, overtime, health insurance, and paid leave. However, many cities and states are taking action against this arrangement. New policies are being put in place to mandate minimum earnings, limit hours, and force benefit contributions. Some are even trying to make gig workers full employees. Governments have been working to provide basic protections to gig workers by classifying them as employees entitled to minimum wage, paid leave, and other benefits. However, companies like Uber and Lyft have fought against these efforts. In California, they spent over $200 million lobbying for Proposition 22, which allows them to continue classifying gig workers as contractors. Although Prop 22 provided a reprieve for gig platforms, they still face legal challenges and potential legislation that could threaten the gig model. The tenuous contractor designation that is central to this business structure may eventually unravel. While gig companies gained lower costs and no responsibilities, they also slammed the door on gig workers gaining meaningful protections and benefits. This led to a public backlash against companies that prioritized profits over fair treatment. Lawsuits alleging improper classification have mounted, with Massachusetts suing Uber and Lyft and obtaining a court ruling that drivers must be classified as employees. Other states have enacted bills that give new rights and protections to gig workers. Labor unions have also stepped up efforts to organize drivers and delivery workers in the face of company union-busting tactics. The tide is turning decisively against gig companies that try to escape liability by relying on contractor loopholes.
I believe market saturation is a huge reason the gig economy faced decline. Companies focused on recruitment to scale up, which led to a surplus of labor supply that far exceeded customer demand. This resulted in reduced income potential for gig workers as they struggled to compete for scarce gigs. Gig workers were left powerless due to a lack of visibility into true labor demand. Companies were not obligated to provide a minimum wage, which further decreased wages every year. The overzealous expansion of companies was unsustainable. Furthermore, customer acquisition and retention costs increased as hundreds of platforms offered identical services. The practice of offering deeply discounted promotional offers to stand out from the competition became unsustainable. By 2019, 53% of Americans considered the gig economy a bad thing for society. The story had soured. Valuations were vastly overinflated relative to weak earnings. The path to profitability remained unclear, even for the largest platforms like Uber and Lyft. Investor sentiment cooled in the face of mounting lawsuits, regulatory uncertainty, and existential threats like driver reclassification. The narrative shifted from gig economy companies poised to conquer the world through disruption to their hubris finally catching up with them. The gig economy's initial vision, which promised flexibility and independence, has finally collapsed with the passage of Proposition 22. This new law cements the contractor business model, which essentially closes the door on a future where gig companies would take responsibility for their workers. Making gig workers employees as demanded by regulators would raise costs for platforms by at least 20 to 30 percent. This would force platforms to significantly raise prices to maintain their margins, which would likely cause them to lose market share. Therefore, the guaranteed flexibility and low costs that gig workers enjoyed is no longer possible. Despite the major gig platforms like Uber still operating, their valuations have been drastically slashed from their peaks. Gig work still exists, but it no longer carries the same appeal of liberation and prosperity that it once had. The promises of technology replacing traditional employment were false. However, the gig economy did pave the way for new models that provide flexible income while ensuring stability and security. Smaller cooperatives and platforms are exploring hybrid approaches that balance worker empowerment with consumer demand. While some aspects of gig work still survive, the future looks very different from the lofty vision sold a decade ago. The rapid expansion without accountability proved unsustainable. Nonetheless, the saga offers lessons for achieving the right balance. Gig companies still remain a multi-billion dollar force, despite the gloomy forecasts that make headlines. Their appeal lies in offering flexibility, independence, and supplemental income to workers, with millions of them claiming to be satisfied with the model. However, the initial enthusiasm and explosive growth of the 2010s seem to have reached a plateau. The once lavish pay rates that attracted new recruits have dwindled, and workers are increasingly aware of the limitations and risks of the model. As a result, Customers and workers now have a better understanding of the model's limitations and risks than they did when the rosy myth was initially sold to them. The future seems to hold a balance between gig and traditional work, rather than a complete paradigm shift. The gig economy is a victim of its own success and hype in some ways. The gold rush mentality and unsustainable expansion made it impossible to fulfill the promises of long-term stability. The question now is what will emerge next from the hangover? While the gig economy may have reached its peak, the flexibility it provides is still highly valued by workers. This paradigm shift may necessitate much-needed reforms in improving livelihoods. However, the easy money and independence promised were likely too good to be true. For now, it seems the party is coming to an end. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching and consider watching our other videos right here.